Hi everybody. Good evening to the Blooming Tribe. I am so grateful for how the um, how the the 21 days of blooming challenge is going so far. You guys have been amazing. I am inspired. I am motivated to continue. Hi, hi there, Miss Sophie. I am so grateful for your questions, your suggestions, your feedback, your participation on the lives, the whole nine yards. Like, I, feel, I really feel the power of the challenge and um, the conversations have been amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for participating and for letting me know what you want me to talk about, yeah? So it's day seven. We had a live yesterday, for those of you who missed it. Um, we spoke on the topic of healing after heartbreak and so this evening I'm focusing on a follow-up which is closure after heartbreak yeah so yesterday we went through the whole nine yards we talked about you know identifying what exactly we're hurting about um, why do we think we're hurting in particular so to, to get very specific as to what has triggered us emotionally is it the feeling of betrayal is it the feeling of loss is it the feeling of having invested so much and not getting the outcome that you want it's really good to get the information from whatever is happening so that we can you know be guided moving forward and to know exactly what worked what didn't work and to really get it right okay so this evening we're talking about closure and just a heads up also if it is that you guys missed um, the live I mean you will see the notification in my in my in the caption on IG but if it is that you want to watch this video again, then I'm going to do my best to save it and upload it to my YouTube channel, which is White Lotus Blooms TV, okay? So you can have a chance to listen again, take notes if you want, um, just engage with the content again if you need a refresher. Tell a friend, share, 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 share the link with somebody that you know so that we can just spread the word and just be great together, right? So just as a reminder, the 21 Days of Blooming Challenge, I started it when we were 21 days away from starting a brand new year and a brand new decade and i figure listen we can't wait until we get in 2020 to be starting to lay the foundation for a, for, a, for a great 2020 it has to start now so we're laying the foundation we're talking about wellness we're talking about self-awareness we're talking about personal development and of course we're talking about relationships so we're talking about love and life so today i want to talk about closure right um, because oftentimes after the breakup we experience a little phase of just being kind of unclear of what next like I'm, I'm in pain I'm hurting I don't like this it's not comfortable what happens now okay so closure by definition is really a mutually agreed upon experience where ideally two people log on hey cuz two people agree that listen um, this experience happened um, we both felt this way about it and the ideal that you know the whole thing that we want to achieve from closure is reaching a space of a resolution and peace and ultimately finality finality meaning okay this happened past tense we are no longer together reaching a space where you're saying yo I have resolved the angst I have resolved you know the emotional turmoil the anger the pain um, you know my need for forgiveness whatever it is just reaching that space hi D, reaching that space of resolution peace and ultimately finality that is the aim of closure so for those of you who are just joining I'm so happy to see you guys um, yesterday we spoke about healing after heartbreak and today I'm tackling another element of the whole healing after heartbreak journey and we're talking about closure after heartbreak yeah because we need to know what we should do what we should wait on how we should feel and the steps that we need to take or not take in order to reach that place of ultimate peace peace is such a powerful word by the way guys like peace has become so valuable to me peace is everything right so peace resolution and finality okay so that's the aim that's the definition of closure which is what we're seeking if it is or when it is that we do experience breakup and yesterday somebody had asked me a question I can't remember who it was on the live they asked me to talk about um, moving on also after divorce so I'm also including that in today's topic closure 
right even after breakup of marriage all right so that that can be a very heavy one but we're going to tackle it as best as we can tonight also yesterday it's really 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 priceless like peace peace is, is powerful it's so valuable right i i want peace sometimes more than i want money just just give me peace just give me peace i just want to be able to rest to abide to sleep right and to be great so that's one of my very very um, important things that I hold on to and I try to preserve it at all costs all right so achieving closure um, after the heartbreak we all know as I mentioned in the caption for my post some of the things that we do after heartbreak yeah so we see it on TV and sometimes we actually do it you know we're eating five tubs of ice cream in five days we're having the heavy KFC all of the unhealthy foods we just feel for them the junk food a lot of popcorn chocolate wine all that stuff right we feel for those types of food sometimes and we kind of overindulge just by virtue of being dramatic after heartbreak yeah i feel like we're almost wired to want some of these unhealthy things and to go for them in excess um and so what happens after all the drama after all the your friends can't reach on the phone for like five to ten days you close all your blinds, you don't want any light to touch you. We're listening to the Adele, right? On repeat, everywhere it's Adele just singing the beautiful sad love songs. Every sad love song known to mankind, we have it on repeat, right? On YouTube. And we know what it, it looks like and we know how it feels. Sometimes it's just confusion. You just feel almost suspended like, what now? You know? And many of us have the lingering questions of, was it me? And sometimes closure can feel like we need it immediately it's such a very powerful need that we have as human beings but the ideal here my first tip for, for, for processing closure or for moving towards closure is right after the breakup when you're hurting just press pause just press pause don't try to run into it immediately don't try to be reaching out to your ex and saying um, why did you say this I said this because so and so no take a minute breathe cry laugh whatever emotions you're feeling feel them and that's one of the things i'm big on i will never be the therapist who comes at you telling you you should not feel sad okay or you should not feel angry my question will always be let's find let, let's talk to the emotions and find out what they're trying to tell us because all our emotions are pretty much messengers they're indicators and signs that something is happening that we need to pay some attention to so our emotions are tools that's how I look at them. Yeah, they're instruments to help us to get to truth and to get back to power, all right, or to stay in power. Um, so right after the heartbreak, just pause, just breathe. Don't be running all up into the heavy conversations with your ex. Just take some time to be alone and nothing is wrong with alone, okay? Have your support system because sometimes you will need them. But at the same time, when I say alone, I mean, don't, don't be trying to flirt with a guy who you know likes you just because if you have that need for validation yeah um just take some time to be hi miss ali j thank you for joining us we're talking about closure tonight um closure after heartbreak or after divorce yeah so take some time take some time to be alone take some time to be comfortable with yourself even if it is that you're feeling pain that's the first step that i'm giving tonight the first tip towards experiencing closure after heartbreak so take take a minute let your ex do what they do you do what you do okay so sometimes we lose ourselves in the journey and we become so caught up in in who we are in relation to our partner yeah and sometimes you create like a um a unified world where you and your ex you and your your partner you have friends in common you're very close to his family or her family and so it's like everything in your space reminds you of them because you guys were pretty much you were coupling yeah you were converging your lives were converging so sometimes you legit need to take a minute and say yo let me just not go out with the girls and all the guys tonight because those are his friends too and i can't deal with the reminders let me just let me just be sometimes it takes us back to a space of reconnecting with self and listen we should always strive to not have to be reconnecting we should strive to stay connected all right so first tip give it a minute take some time go back go back home which is here right go back to self the next thing we need to consider now is two instances how do we do with the two instances um, of closure sometimes 
um, you and your ex are still on speaking terms. So what do you do? If you and your ex are still on speaking terms, because heaven knows that it's fully possible to have a breakup and it be amicable and it be mature and it be even kind, yeah, or sensitive. Um, but two people just realize that this is no longer working. So if it is that you and your ex are still on speaking terms, and an important consideration here now, my tribe, if it is that you trust your ex to be honest and to not be manipulative, can we just stick a big pin right here and talk about the gaslighters? Do we know what gaslighting means? I feel like that's a whole nother course by itself, yeah? Because some people are with some narcissistic partners, unfortunately, um, or just some generally toxic, unwell, um, imbalanced partners, and they are gaslighters. I was watching an episode of Red Table Talk recently, and I love that show because of the vulnerability and the openness, and I love how people have just rallied around it. it. It tells me that, you know, as a tribe, we all are seeking, you know, to better and to level up, to better ourselves and to level up. So um, Jada had a therapist on the show, I can't remember her name, but she was talking about the narcissistic partners and the profile, you know, what kind of behaviors they exhibit. And importantly, she went on to define or to tell us where the term gaslighting comes from. So back in the day, you actually had lights, lights like, you know, things that dispel darkness that used to be, oper that used to be fueled by gas, okay? And there was a particular movie I think it's a 1960s or 70s movie. I think it was, was it called Gaslight? I'm not sure. In which a man was living with his wife and they were living in some kind of a remote home. And he, um, he started to just tweak the lights ever so slightly. So he would just adjust the brightness of the light. And when he would finish adjusting it, sometimes his wife would say to him, did you adjust the lights? And he would say no, that he was deliberately being deceptive. So she would be there thinking to herself, I'm pretty sure that I saw the lights get dimmer or brighter as the case might have been, but he's there telling her that no, I didn't adjust them. And she literally went insane, according to the movie. And that's where the, the term gaslighting comes from. So it's a practice whereby a partner will deliberately deceive in a manipulative way um, by you know, te pretty much projecting onto a partner that, no, 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 you're imagining this. It's all you. I did nothing wrong. You are the one. You are the one with the problem. It's you. You're imagining it. You're making it up. It's because of your pain and your history. Denying of responsibility totally and utterly. And additionally, which is the, the devastating part, putting it, trying to put it onto the other partner. So it's you. You are the one who doesn't understand me. You are the one who is just constantly making these things up. And it can lead to some serious, some serious mental um, torture and emotional distress. This whole thing of gaslighting. So I'm pretty sure many of us, if you, if you can identify with a gaslighter, have you ever been gaslighted? Just, just raise your hands in the comments, yeah? Because I feel like so many women have experienced a partner who was a, a chronic gaslighter. So I've heard of experiences. Yes. So I've heard of experiences where... Um, a partner can actually know that they did something chronically wrong like awful and they have deceived their partner and the partner will actually come back to them and apologize and they will accept the apology because gaslighting typically comes from a space of complete detachment from self and from truth and from authenticity and complete detachment from wanting to be good to your partner and also from a very self-centered self-absorbed self-serving narcissistic place so I'm never wrong, okay? I can never accept any culpability for any actions. Like, it's, it's ever gonna, it's you. It's always you, okay? That's pretty, that, that's like chronic gaslighting. And so if it is that you had a partner, so it is now your ex, and you, have a, you had a partner who was a narcissist, your ex is a gaslighter, clearly we cannot trust them to ask them, what did I do wrong in this relationship? What do you think of me? We can't trust their lenses because their lenses are, are distorted by their own needs to be perfect and to always have you be the one who is wrong, okay? So that's my, that's my disclaimer. When I say, if you're still speaking to your ex, closure can be, can be achieved if both partners agree to have a conversation, like a, literally a closing conversation, yeah? Do not attempt this 
if you're on speaking terms with your ex and your ex happens to be a narcissist or your ex happens to be a, a, a you know a category five gaslighter abort mission you cannot trust them you should not open yourself up any further to having conversations you should literally block and delete at this point yeah for your own mental well-being you should run for your life but if it is that your partner is reasonable is sensible is open to dialogue then a conversation can be had and here are some tips um, related to managing the conversation number one don't do it right after the breakup as I said before give yourself a minute give them a minute when you reach out seek permission you know are you open to this and ideally the conversation should happen after you have had some time to process what the hell happened okay you should have some insights it shouldn't be that you're going into the space completely dependent on the other person to tell you everything and to be the eyes of the conversation no because it's a very that power dynamic is imbalanced and it can be dangerous emotionally and psychologically yeah so you should at this point have some insights into okay i feel this way about that particular thing yeah um you know he feels that way and we can come together as two mature adults ideally and have a conversation how long should the conversation be some therapists recommend you know let's not go over like 40 minutes 45 minutes you don't want it to be too long because it can really despite best intentions and a good mood to start out with if you kind of prolong it too much beyond a certain point it can get a little dicey a little bit temperamental and it can just go really go down the drain really quickly so kind of have a time limit in place can we talk for half an hour this thursday so leave space for the fact that it may go over but don't try to be doing an hour ideally yeah don't try to make it too long the other things now to consider in that conversation are start start off with the positives yeah um you know nobody loves to be attacked with everything that, that, that they they did wrong to so start off with the positive so you know while we were together you know i really i really found you to be a good listener or like you know i felt like you had my back most of the time and then you can segue into you know i feel like what led to the to the demise of our relationship you know was the fact that you um didn't seem to understand where i was coming from about this particular need or boundaries or whatever and then do not ever go into it with this attitude you 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 no. that's why i said leave some time before you have the convo because you should be going into the con in, into the conversation with some amount of responsibility for how you contributed and as i would have said in yesterday's class which i think is probably still live in my stories um even if it is that we did not intentionally hurt the other person the fact that we stayed in a space means that we contributed we must have contributed something even if we were perfectly silent that that's a contribution to a breakdown of a relationship so something must have gone with you too that would have made the relationship unstable and or, or, or not tenable yeah so do not go into it with you 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 nobody likes to always be accused so open up the conversation open up yourself to you know um, honest sharing balanced sharing and be open to feedback as well and remember that not all feedback will feel good and not all feedback is good so we have to have our filters working when we go into the conversation that's why I said avoid the gaslighters because they will distort everything and also mess you up uh, mentally yeah so have the conversation what is it that you think contributed to where you know to the fact that this did not work in the backstory now another tip is having the conversation regarding closure should not be an attempt to get back together okay you should be able to emotionally um, separate that desire if you still have it and if you still have it it's okay just be honest about it to yourself like I wish that we could get back together but if you are not able to be objective in the convo to say let's talk about what happened then ideally I would say delay it or avoid it because you do not want to go in there in your mind wearing rose colored lenses right with the um thinking that after we talk about it for, for an hour we're going to be good again and your partner doesn't feel the same way so go in in a fact-finding mission in a kind of a information seeking rather information seeking uh, mission i heard somebody i read a quote that said um you should use the past as fertilizer for the present so that's what the whole journey of seeking closure should ideally be about I want to I want to have a, um, another view 
you know, the other person's view, contributing to my assessment of what happened. Who was I? Who was my partner? How did they show up? How did I show up? What did I need? That's a very important one that ultimately we should be able to answer um, in, throughout the course of seeking closure. Why was I in the relationship to begin with? Um, and this is one activity that I have in one of my in one of my ebooks, yeah, a worksheet where I'm asking people, what needs do you want to be met in a relationship? Um, and I, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on this, yeah. Why do we even open ourselves up to be with anybody? Because it can be like a whole lot of drama. But what needs do we want met? We have the needs for com companionship, very natural and very normal, very healthy. We have the need for um, feeling valued. We have the need for respect and there are differences oftentimes between the, the needs that men have in relationships and the needs that women have in relationships, yeah? Um, as women, sometimes we have a need to feel protected. We have a need to be validated in some types of way. We have a need to be nurtured, yeah? We have a need to nurture as well and we have to watch that carefully so that we don't mother anybody's big grown ass son, right? Um, men and women have the need for you know pleasure for sexual intimacy physical intimacy and we have to remember too that there is a difference between intimacy and sex okay and sometimes even though we tend to assume that men are just always wanting sex sometimes men really just want for you to touch them to connect with them physically even outside of a sexual experience so we have different needs that we want met some people go into relationships seeking the need for prestige Right, so if I am with that person, then I am seen as a bigger, you know, I'm like a bigger deal, and so we have this need to be validated um, in a way, in a public way, that we have to we have to watch that and and check that real quick, yeah. So we have to become honest about what needs do, did we want to be to have met in the relationship, and what needs were met and what needs were not met. Which of your partner's needs did you meet which, and which did, did, did you not meet? And why? That big question of why. Hi, Miss Melisha. Thank you for joining us again. We're talking about closure after heartbreak tonight, okay? Um, so we're talking about, you know, seeking closure from your partner. And so it's important to walk away from the conversation if your ex and you are on speaking terms with that information. You know, I was not showing up in my full power here because maybe I felt like I was being too intimidating. Or maybe I felt like my partner was too intimidated by me, so I kind of dim my shine. And that's why I created a t-shirt with a slogan that says, Won't dim my shine to be wifed. And it was a big controversial thing in my, in my group of friends. Like, I don't know if I like this. I'm like, I like it. Yeah? Because my thing is that it should never be a case of trying to put somebody down or make them feel small. But if you are powerful, if you are gifted, if you are brilliant, if you are ambitious, if you are on the up, then why should you have to intentionally take those things down two notches or five notches for your partner to feel comfortable? A secure partner should be able to celebrate your strengths, especially if it's a, if it's, if it's a case where you're not trying intentionally or in, unintentionally to make them feel small, okay? What do you guys think about that? Because I'm pretty clear, right? Won't dim my shine to be wife. So if being wifed by you, requires that I dim then you're not the one and I'm not the one okay that's those are my thoughts and I'd love to hear your guys feedback on that particular thinking so yeah we need to walk away from it from the conversation with these things in mind now it's also important um, to, to, to consider the situation in which you and your ex are not on speaking terms um, and if that's the case then you're gonna have to create the closure your own self and there is such a thing. Sometimes you have to make your own closure. And this is where it gets dicey. This is the reason why I created this whole, um, this particular um, topic for our 21 Days of Blooming. Because sometimes you fall into a trap of staying stuck, yeah, in the name of seeking closure. And sometimes your partner can't give you the closure. Sometimes your partner should not be the one that you're getting the closure from. It's not healthy. Sometimes you have to create your own closure. Sometimes you have to accept apologies that will never come. Okay? Um, and so it's so crucial to just be wise. Yeah? Be wise in, in, the, in, in this whole journey. Um, some people, you can't trust them to be your sounding board or to help you to process what happened. You need to literally detach. You need to block. 
you need to delete their numbers and you need to keep it all, moving all the way along yeah so in that situation now it's still important for you to follow through with some of the to, to seek some of the experiences that closure ideally gives which are seeking resolution peace my favorite word and also finality how do you do that by yourself so you can talk to your girlfriends or your male friends your sisters you know what I mean and tell them 50, 50 million times how he did this he did not do that I can't believe he said this how dare he how dare she um, have done this and that's normal to a point but ultimately it, it's really it really is an inside job and it never is the ideal to constantly be saying this person did not love me the way I needed to to always put it on the other person because all of us brought something to the table and it's a sign of maturity to be able to say yeah and an important thing too is as best as possible we need to shed 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 that um, that need to how should I put this now we have this need to walk away from past relationships with a feeling that you know I'm perfect or I'm blameless we don't want to take any take any negative criticism or any negative feedback yeah and 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 additionally sometimes we put the entire outcome of the relationship on ourselves not Nagoso and I've heard so many women unfortunately come to me for therapy or talk in other in other fora about the fact that you know depending on how the relationship ended or depending on when you decided to leave you take it personally as if it's a reflection of who you are totally that's unhealthy so for example there's so many of us who have been I guess socialized in some ways and we have to be unlearning it but we have been socialized to believe that for example if a man cheats it's a reflection on you or if a woman cheats it's a reflection on you it is a reflection of their decisions and yes we all contribute to the relationship and the health of it but especially if two people agreed that our space is a monogamous space and we're mutually exclusive then an, one person stepping out it should never be said or intimated that it's because you were not this enough or that enough then the mature person should have ideally come to you and said I'm not getting what I need maybe we should end this okay or I'm not getting what I need can we talk about how we can grow and fix the problem as opposed to breaching trust stepping outside the boundaries established and doing that so if anybody listening to this um, life class tonight has had the experience of having a, a partner being unfaithful to them and you have been walking around cutting yourself up inside holding hanging your head down because you feel as though it's a big indictment on who you are I want you to release that and unlearn that start the journey tonight of releasing that you can't make anybody do anything okay we can't make people be who they are we can't make be people be who they are not we can't change people people make their decisions in spite of us and so we need to release the burden and the baggage of feeling as though yo I was the one who sent him over to her you know because I wasn't freaky enough or I wasn't engaging enough or I wasn't whatever it's not your responsibility a hundred percent take your part and leave the rest okay so um, what can you do then to process what happened if you're not talking to your partner number one you can do activities like writing a letter to say the things that you wish you could say to them but clearly it's not ideal to say to them yeah write it down and let me tell you something you may think that this is like a little you know preschool activity it can be so immensely powerful I remember being asked by my therapist to write down a letter and yes all of us therapists should have therapists yeah it should be a part of everybody's leveling up she asked me to write a letter to my father because I was having a lot of anger towards him and resentment and feelings of abandonment because of how he was not there for me yeah and I was like what kind of fool fool homework this is so dumb and I promise you guys I went home and I got my little book right I always have my little my little pad when I'm talking to you guys and I went home and I took my pencil and I started to write and at first I was being very polite you know dear daddy this 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 perfect penmanship everything was nice you know the ocean was so calm and lovely and then all upon a sudden I reached a place where I feel like as, as a psychologist I can tell you what happened I feel like it was that door to my subconscious opening up 
and allowing for what's down there under the iceberg, under the, the, the sea level, to come up to the surface. And that is why writing is a very powerful thing. It has a way of helping us to tap in sometimes without, without our conscious effort, to tap into what's really going on. If we let ourselves just write from a place of freedom, so don't try to formulate what you're writing, just write. How do you feel? Just let your hands express what's really going on deep inside. And that's what I started to do eventually. And when I did that, it was like floodgates opened. I found myself writing things to my father, which were, which were so true, but I did not know it consciously. And at this point, I was studying to become a psychologist, but we all have our blind spots. And we still have them, even when we're whatever, right? That's why we have to continue on the journey. And so when I started to write, and I reached a place, that kind of place where the subconscious, the, the, the door opened up, I, I found myself writing to him, Daddy, I've been a good girl. Why didn't you want me? I was never consciously, I, I didn't consciously think of it that way. Intellectually, I wasn't aware that I felt that despite my best efforts, he didn't want me because he wasn't there. I never realized that before. And it was because of that activity, I was able to also see the pattern, loud and clear, big and bold, that I was also being, um, I was attracted to unavailable men because my father was unavailable, okay? So that activity of writing down, as my therapist said, writing, writing a letter to my father, and do not try to control the narrative, just let it flow. Just write whatever comes to your heart, to your mind. Don't think. Sometimes we intellectualize, and by doing that, we kind of, um, we kind of, what's the word? We kind of, we kind of bleach, and we kind of, you know, remove the essence, the truth of our expressions. So writing, journaling, and especially writing a letter to an ex, for example, to seek closure as much as possible, just be free, just be loose, yeah? Get your pencil, get your paper, and just write from that deep place inside and I promise you it can be a very transformative thing and a very powerful thing because here was I on the verge of becoming a therapist having a full-on epiphany about so many important dynamics in my life okay I didn't realize I didn't I didn't I didn't think that my father wanted me I didn't realize I was trying so hard to be a good girl to make him have chosen me this was all news to me you understand so I was able to tap into those dynamics it was a huge deluge of emotions at some point i wasn't able to write in a way that i could read it wasn't even legible anymore i was just scribbling furiously and i needed that because there were so many things neatly tucked away because my intellect was processing them and not allowing my emotions to really come to the fore so under the activity under the the list of activities you can do if you and your ex are not on talking terms you can write a letter sit down and be honest okay be honest about how you feel um, what you wanted, what is no longer possible, what you wish for, what you were hurt by, how you think you may have hurt them, what your fears are, what you feel guilty about, you know, what you wish for, just write it down. The things that you would have wanted to say to them but can't. That's one activity. Some people utilize another one which is sitting and talking to an empty chair. So just line up yourself as if the person were really there and have a conversation. Just, just getting the feelings out into the open, so to speak, out of your innermost, out of your mind, yeah? Um, out of the space of all the Adele lyrics swirling around. Just just get some expression to put it out there, whether on paper or just into the, into the atmosphere, into the universe, just put it out there so that it's no longer residing here and just being a big ball of unresolved emotions, yeah? And sometimes by putting, putting, your, putting your words, you know, putting voice to your, to your feelings, you can start to say, oh, you can have epiphanies even while talking. So try not to be the one who is always just kind of mulling around and moping, you know, and into the whole um, dark love songs and stuff. There's a time for that, but don't make that too long a period. Get into a space of putting, you know, in a structured way. Why do I feel angry? Who am I angry at? Why do I feel abandoned? Yeah, have I felt this before? Because we're going to talk about patterns in another, um, another day of the 21 days challenge, right? We're going to talk about the patterns. Have I felt this before? Did I push this person away out of fear of being rejected or of being abandoned? How did I contribute? How did I show up? Yeah? What was I afraid of? What even now after the breakup would I be afraid for my ex to know? You know? 
these are important things to 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 give voice to yeah so that's one thing that we can do we can also do something like a clearing activity so for some people they will actually write the letter and tear it up okay and throw it away or for some people they will bury something you know whatever works for you some people release balloons with notes in them just you know your, your feelings about the situation I want to tell you that I really felt XYZ way and I will I vow to myself to never XYZ again whatever express it right let it go in some ways whether you want to burn the paper after you write it you want to bury it as an act of just putting that all the way down maybe you want to plant some flowers on top of what you buried to sing to, to, to signal that you know the experience was really fertilizer that will help your future to bloom you know we can create so many interesting and even fun rituals that can just help us to visualize what we're actually desirous of and moving toward which is finality burial putting it putting it um, behind me um, releasing this not keeping the energy of this past space yeah some people may find that giving away or throwing away destroying whatever gifts your ex gave you you don't want to have those memories around that that could also be an activity to do to just um, help yourself on the journey of getting to closure getting to peace getting to resolution all right now if your ex gave you like a Mercedes Benz I don't know right you guys have to tell me what you think about that but generally you know um, so, so Diane is asking, these would be good ideas for coping with our biggest hurts from the last activity. So I'm talking about closure, um, achieving closure after heartbreak is what tonight's topic is. So it's a follow-up, of course, from yesterday's topic, which was um, healing from the hurt. So a part of the healing journey is getting to a space of having closure. And we're talking about some activities to help us achieve closure. If it is that you and your ex are not on speaking terms, or if it is that your ex is not the kind of person that is ideally, um, you know, going to be open, sensitive, honest, rational, not abusive, then do not be engaging your ex in no closure um, conversation. Before you came on, Diane, we spoke about if it is that your ex and you are on speaking terms and you can trust them to be a good, you know, you can trust their filter of what happened in the relationship, how you were in the relationship, then by all means, have a conversation with them about you know what happened, speak about the positives as well as what didn't work, because the aim is to get information, not only from your own recollection, which could be skewed, but from somebody that you were with, in terms of you know, you know know, what did not work for you. How, why do you think it's the best thing for us to end it? Why did you end it? Or why do you think I ended it? Those kind of, those kind of conversations. So we spoke about, for those of you who joined in late, we spoke about um, if you're on speaking terms and it's a safe thing to do, actually having a conversation, keeping it short, aim for like 30 minutes to 40, 45 minutes maximum. Um, ask, ask the person if they're open to it. Don't be, don't be demanding it. It's not something that you automatically, you know, um, deserve or that, that, or no, let me not say deserve, not something that you're automatically entitled to. Perhaps the person is on a different journey, a slower journey than you are, and they're not ready nor open to having a conversation. That's okay as well, right? So if it is that both of you are open to it, and another important thing which I think I forgot to add is find a neutral space. Sometimes, so many spaces have become reminders of, you know, your history. You know, we, we've gone on dates all the time to this particular place. You know, your friends work here, your friends go here all the time. Not a good place to do it. Also, try to make it a space where you can talk, but not one that's too private. Because I promise you guys, I watch a lot of Law & Order SVU, a lot of Criminal Minds, but I also have a lot of therapy with people. And unfortunately, sometimes breakup violence is real. So you don't want to be in a space where just in case emotions start to get, to get a little bit high, that it's a dangerous space for you physically or emotionally, and an abusive situation ensues. So don't be locked away in a bedroom with um, your ex talking about what did not happen or what did not work. Do not do it, guys. Don't do it, yeah? Find a space where people can see you. If you're in distress, they can hear you. But a space that's also private enough for you to actually talk to each other uninterrupted as much as possible, yeah? But if it is now, Diane, that you are not on speaking terms with your ex, or if your ex is a gaslighter, which we spoke about in detail, or if your ex is just not, you know, a safe person for you to be asking for feedback, then you have to create your own inside closure. It's going to be an inside job for you. 
you're going to have to get apologies that nobody gives you you're going to have to process them and accept them and move on from those alone without input from them so these are the activities that we're talking about journaling writing a letter to your partner um, burying you know like having a, bur a, bur a burial ceremony giving away what they gave you destroying them throwing them away not having them in your space type of thing because sometimes if you keep looking at the watch that Bay gave you and you secretly want Bay back but Bay was not good to you that's a whole nother set of drama yeah that we don't need so I'm not telling to telling you that you have to do it but it can be something that you, you may find beneficial and then also be considerate of clearing your space closure is supposed to be clearing your space um, seeking working through the emotions to ultimately get towards um, peace resolution and finality to say this happened yeah and I am now healing and moving towards my next best my best love story my next best self etc and consider also what it would be like for your new partner the one that you have been journaling about and intentioning right and being a better person to be able to be good to them when that person comes into your space you know do you think it's it's a big issue for them to be seeing and knowing that this gift was given to you by by former bay and would you want the same for them like would you want to be in their apartment and seeing a huge beautiful portrait that is like a big um it was the portrait was taken or was given to you know to your partner by his ex because it was a wonderful celebration it's some big deal for them would you want that to be in your space constantly so think about it from that person's perspective now you know your future bay do you want them to come and be seeing that you know your whatever something in your space something in your house something that you wear a lot was given to you gifted to you by your former partner what will you say to them and i'd love to hear your views on this like you know in terms of the not not keeping this from your ex what do you think about that yeah um so yes we can sometimes we are also required or we need to create a new circle because sometimes when you date somebody for a long time your circle of friends kind of become their circle of friends and vice versa and sometimes hanging out with them all the time and hearing them talk about lucas and what lucas is doing now right um and lucas's new girlfriend perhaps or you know mary's new person or whatever um sometimes that can really be triggering and painful especially before you are fully complete you have fully completed the closure you know journey you don't want to be hearing about lucas's new job and lucas 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 it can be too much yeah so sometimes you you will be forced to really start to you know re-envision who are your people now because i can't be going to his mother's house as much as i used to when i was with him or any at all because it's just it's just it's awkward it's weird and it perhaps may be painful reminders so maybe some of your friends who were close to you maybe you're gonna have to just kind of pull away a little bit because of the memories and because of the associations yeah so you may have to create a new circle in order to really achieve closure right now does closure mean that um you know we will not miss the person anymore no does closure mean that you will not remember them fondly no does closure mean that you have to see them as a good person no closure is really for us and if, if, if I leave nothing else with, with, with my tribe throughout the 21 days journey, it, it's this. It's important for us to start focusing inward. And every time I say it, I feel compelled to add a disclaimer that it's not selfish because we have been so socialized to think that if we're not giving our heart, our soul, our kidneys and our lungs, then we're being selfish. No. All of this, happiness, joy, feeling fulfilled, being emotionally healthy, well-being, managing stress, all of these things start within it has to start with us yeah and so closure is supposed to be about yo let me just check myself how was I in that space what does it mean what does it mean for my future I love that question what does it mean for my future because you don't want to become stuck right you don't want to become stagnant in just remembering oh I was I was his woman and it was so good and now nothing good will, 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 will happen for me anymore no that's not true so focus on yourself do not rush to start dating again and i know it can be a very easy trap to fall into where you know bay has left or bay has said it's over and you know that that guy over there is them kind of like you yeah or that girl that kind of like you and you just start to engage them 
just just wanting that kind of a romantic attention wanting the flirting because you really want validation because you feel as though they took it away from you like by virtue of it ending it means something bad about you and so you want it it's an easy trap and you know so you don't want him or her you don't want that person but the temptation is there to just kind of just get it and it can be unfair to that person as well because maybe they want something serious yeah so do the whole universe a favor ladies and gentlemen and start to clear space before you start to engage with people's children don't do it because you wouldn't want somebody to do that to you okay so get comfortable with being by yourself you don't have to be lonely to be by yourself and you can be having a good time by yourself yeah and that doesn't mean that you don't long for companionship it just means that you create a life that is really fulfilling okay and, and remember that you have the power to create that life so ultimately if a breakup has happened for you recently or there has been some heartbreak maybe not even recently maybe it's, it happened earlier this year or last year but it still hurts and you still kind of feel like you have this need to figure out what happened it's a healthy desire but we have to manage it carefully not in, in, in not in every situation is it going to be ideal to have the, co the closure conversation with that with an ex sometimes we have to create our own closure okay and we have to move on and i'm going to close off this evening and open up for answer for questions and comments by citing something i said yesterday which is the comparison trap sometimes becoming like a real thief of our joy and a real toxic thing in our space where we start to look at who move on from who no move on and what it means okay and my analysis on this whole topic of you know he has a new woman and you want to look at them all the time and figure out my thing is this sometimes thank you sometimes we feel as though um, if your partner moved on with somebody who you feel is lesser than you is disrespectful to you like oh you feel leave good with me and good this so right if your partner moves on to somebody who you think is better is like a, a step up by whatever metrics we're using then you feel all types of ways about it okay either way my suggestion is just do you just stand in the fact that you are valuable period the comparison thing is a recipe for unwellness and resentment and anger and being stuck for months or years at a time you don't don't be consumed with who the person has moved on with or are they happy are you happy yeah what makes you happy because we don't sometimes people fake it on social media do not get caught up in the trap of scanning her her the new woman social media and looking at her entire physicality oh my god her skin is so gorgeous my skin is not that's why he left me ah oh, no don't do that yeah stand in a place of value and it will take work as i keep saying it's a muscle that we have to build stand in it but do not consume too much of this comparison juice where you're scanning and scrolling and looking and listening to oh they went to italy oh my god he only took me to burger king don't do that you know it's hard but it's harder especially if we keep consuming the information and we keep answering the phone calls from your girlfriend who just love the drama girl if you see her outfit or what he bought for her no block that from your space okay and start from a start from a place of saying I am valuable and sometimes even if it do, if it doesn't work out it doesn't mean that anybody is a bad person necessarily sometimes two good people are not good for each other and it's okay guys I promise you it's okay all right it's okay sometimes people are not at their best enough to be good to you and sometimes you are not at your best enough to be good to them it doesn't work it doesn't mean that your life is over you understand let us not get stuck in that kind of fatalistic thinking and therefore become very hungry very desperate for the for the comparison information right or oh, they getting married wow after after 18 months wow mm -mm. focus on you what you are doing what what are you doing and i don't mean to try to create something just to say oh i'm doing this it should not be about any um external sources okay of being validated it should be coming from here okay i'm in this space you know i have plans i have stuff i'm doing things do you do you okay so i leave you with these words this evening i hope this was beneficial to you 
I'm opening up for, for a couple minutes of questions, comments, what you want me to talk about next. Feedback time, yeah? Um, yeah. We're on day seven of the challenge, and I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so this was um, closure after heartbreak. Yesterday we did healing after heartbreak. What should I do next? What do you think? And um, do you have any questions and experiences that you'd love to share for me to speak a little bit deeper on? Do you think I'm making sense? Do you think this is, you know, super fluous and just too unattainable? Do you think you have to be scrolling people's social media? What do you think? Have you ever experienced closure and felt the relief of, who? yeah, I feel I'm going to be good. You know, have you experienced closure in any past situation? Yeah. Um, so for Tammy, I think it's still in my stories. So do check it out. Yesterday's one about um, healing after heartbreak. And good news. Sometimes I press the download button for the video to save it and it doesn't work. I don't know what I'm doing wrong or something. But this one was saved. So I'm going to put it to my YouTube channel and share the link to my YouTube channel in my Instagram bio. You have it. Okay. So. Thank you for joining me, The Bougie Therapist. I'd love to hear your feedback, any questions, suggestions. What, what, did you found, um, what did you find that worked for you as it relates to finding closure in a past breakup situation? Um, what are some of the things to not do? Um, you know, just share with me. What have you found to work and not work as it relates to closure? What mistakes have, have you made in the past as it relates to, you know, probably jump, moving on too quickly? Or wanting to constantly talk to your ex or whatever the case is you know I spoke yesterday about sometimes this thing where we say oh I want us to still be friends sometimes it can be unnatural sometimes it can be unattainable sometimes it can be unkind to one party or the other because they are not able to look at you as your friend only so don't be too quick to be saying oh I just want to be friends just, just let's, let, let's, let's just be friends sometimes you have to just let it go all right Melisha says Good talk. I think you should do something about how to realistically, um, when developing a new relationship. Tell me, I think you missed a word. How to real, how to, or how to be realistic when developing a new relation. That's a very good one. Good one. And 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 are you referencing not taking like your baggage into it, or um, not expecting things to happen too quickly? Tell me, tell me like your, your particular angle that like you want me to tackle, because sometimes you meet somebody, and we had our second date, and we start to sign our names. Um, as their last name yeah so we have to <laughs> that's too much too soon and it speaks to some issues that we might have that we need to be, be mindful of so tell me exactly what you, what you want me to focus on so that we can you know we can I can prepare that content for you and Tammy says how do you know when it's time to date again that's a very good question um, so if it is that your ex and what happened with your ex is not a major motivating force in your behavior is not a very present um, consideration for you so you're not waking up and saying oh at this time today we would have been walking down um, Devon house and having ice cream oh my god clearly you're still very present in that space so it's not going to be good for you nor good for a, a future partner to still be you know having one foot in the past and wanting to go to the future no um, so that's one indicator if it is that you can be honest with yourself about the fact that I want to date because I want to feel the feelings that I felt when I was in that last love space, that's also a sign that you should not, you should probably not, not be dating. Because ideally, a relationship should not only be about what we get, but what we are able and willing and committed to giving to another party as well. Yeah. So if you're focused on, I hate this feeling that I'm feeling right now, I feel kind of like undesired or undesirable or unlovable or unloved and I, I want to just erase it so if you're seeking a new relationship to be like a band-aid for a negative emotional space that's not it either sis that's not it yeah and these questions require for us to be deathly honest with ourselves which is hard sometimes sometimes we want it but and it's okay to want it but we should not act on it okay if it is that you still find yourself wishing to reconnect with your ex then chances are you know, they say, they say where the mind goes, energy flows. And maybe your feet will follow eventually. So it's very important to be honest, to be kind, to think about what you would have wanted in that situation. How would you want, how soon would you want a partner, um, a future partner to start dating after his breakup? What would you want him to clear from his space before he steps to you? Yeah. What would be kind to you for him to do or not do? 
sometimes if you look at it that way it's better for us to say okay yeah i get you what would be kind to a new partner you know having all this physical and emotional you know these physical and emotional memories and um, mementos and reminders remember the gift from lucas yeah um reminders of you know what was and the good things about that then we're not ready yeah, yeah tell me what you think about that tell me if you want me to go a little bit deeper want more tips more indicators um, Melisha says yes in relation to baggage and trust and not feeling that you are moving on even when your heart is not into it thank you so much so I'm gonna make a note of that um, realistic when moving on okay so when, when you have a new partner okay what to do what to expect how to be what to want yeah so Tammy those are some of my indicators of how you know when it's you know when it's time to date again if it is that you are you can tell when you're connected to yourself and you are not trying to date in order to have a better life because that's always a fallacy as well we have to love the lives that we have as us and not look for somebody else to make us happy so when it is that you're in a space where you love yourself you love your life though imperfect yeah and though lacking in some things or whatever that you are grateful for what you have and you are content with yourself then I believe that you know adding a partner to the mix is a healthy next step okay um, after doing the emotional work and so on but if you're still having some 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 you know niggling thoughts and memories um, that that are very strong that are persistent about our past situation and there's some there's, there's still some lack of resolution then chances are so Tammy says a little bit deeper please excuse me my breakup was a year and a half ago I tried dating again earlier this year and realized I'm still not ready even though I'm not pining over my ex so can you tell me some of the reasons why you feel like you're still not ready it could be fair yeah um, and I think your question Tammy is so beautifully connected to Melisha's um, request for, 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 for the next topic as it relates to um, how can you be realistic sometimes after the breakup we literally put um, like a big fence around our hearts because we're so terrified of being vulnerable again and we're so terrified of being vulnerable again and be hurt in this way so a part of us is maybe we have one foot kind of ready to move on but we have one foot that's anchored in the fear of I'm not moving from here until I see until I see that this is safe that is a sign that we still have some work to do and I'm not saying that we should be naive and jump headfirst into everything but surely we, we we ideally should be at a place where we are we feel in control of the unfurling of the story of the narrative where we can say okay anything can happen you can meet somebody and trust them after three months and something bad happens you can meet somebody and trust them after 15 years something bad happens yeah do you have the resources do you believe you have the resources to really manage it in case something happens do you believe that you have the power and the agency um, in and of yourself to um, you know be honest and to require for the other party to be honest as well to as, as best as possible uh, mitigate against the possibility of heartbreak but, but you know you can't control it yeah so I'm getting my signal to wrap up from Instagram it's I have a minute and 32 seconds remaining so I'm gonna jump off as I did yesterday and come right back on so we can talk for maybe 15 more minutes to answer your questions so I'm gonna jump off jump back on with me please um, for like 10 minutes so we can just finish answering the questions and be great all right so see you guys in literally a second <laughs>